this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you for joining me today for another little tutorial. I'm a start an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator here in the UK. I'd love to be your demo. If you haven't ordered from Stampin' Up before and don't already have a demo, I'd love for you to shop with me. Link to my shop is down below. All the products I use today will be in my shop. Um, so you can just pop down there and um, have a look. All the links to the products that I use will also be below on the, in the description. So you can just click a link and go straight through to that product in my shop. Right, today we're making this simple little card um, using my fa one of my favourite Stampin' Up! products ever, the Medium Daisy Punch. It's a lovely, lovely punch. And, um, and because I'm Paper Daisy, of course, I like paper daisies um, but I just love it it's a nice size it punches really well really lovely so I'm just going to show you how I made this card with three panels um, yeah so here we go right okay I'm just going to check the name of this paper true love don't know why this black and white paper is called true love um, but it is um, it was in the spring mini, as it is in the spring mini, it's still available. And it's just all these lovely black and white designs. They're absolutely gorgeous, some floral and some sort of geometric. Um, I have to say I prefer the geometric ones, but I am going to have a go at fussy cutting some of these flowers and um, colouring them. Um, I've loved the dotty paper, I've used a lot of that. But it's it's a really lovely pack. I love black and white, um, and I've, I can see I've used quite a lot of it. There's not that much left. We're going to be using that again today. So we're using the same same pattern that we used on this card. But we're going to change up the colours a little bit today. We're going to use um, Magenta Madness. Everybody's been using polished pink since the new ink colours came out. But I thought I would go... This is one of the only colours of... Um, last year's um in colors that i really liked was the magenta madness i do love a hot pink i've got clothes that are hot pink i i it's is one of my colors um so you're going to start with a card blank this measures 21 centimeters by 15 centimeters sorry had to mind blank then and i've scored it at 10 and a half if you want it in inches it is and i can never remember i think it's eight and a quarter so then you need to score at four and eight. And this way, I think it's about six inches. Yeah, just a smidge off six inches. So that's our card blank. Just give it a good burnish. And then we need a panel of Whisper White. Actually, not Whisper White, Basic White. I've got to get used to saying Basic White and not Whisper White. Um, and... The panel of Whisper White, which I've written down somewhere, measures, I'm going to cut this down to 14.4 by 9.9. .9. So it's going to be 0.6 of a centimetre smaller than my card blank. So I'm going to cut it at 14.4. So like I said, it's just six millimetres smaller than my card blank. So there's going to be a border of three millimetres all the way around. I just found, I know I could do it in half centimetres, which would make it a lot easier, but I just feel that that, that one millimetre just makes such a lot of difference, just gives you a slightly wider border, which I quite like. So there's my panel of basic white. Some thin whisper white and um, basic white. You don't need to use the thicker cardstock for this. You only need thicker cardstock if you're going to be um, using it as the card blank. There, can, can you see how nice that border is? And just that extra millimetre has made all the difference. It would just be a smidge smaller if it was um, if I just did it to 0.5. I really like that. Right, now we need three panels. And I've just about got enough scraps of this paper left to do my three panels. They measure 9.4 centimetres this way and four across. So I'm going to have to trim these down to four centimetres. This is, oh, this is just going to be enough to do two of them. Excellent. So two panels of 9.4 by four the same no that's not enough oh that's just slightly smaller for I'm not going to use that one then I'll cut it I've got enough to do it out of here and so then we'll do four centimeters actually let's just trim this off to nine four first of all is it nine four I said yeah because and I'll get that strip which I can present I can use that for something else I will try and use up all these little scraps. I do hate having to throw away any um, designer series paper, so I do try to use it. Right, okay. 
There we go. So I've got three panels that each measure four centimetres by 9.4 centimetres. And I will just, as I've done the others in inches, though I didn't do the white panel. Let me ch check the white panel for you. I know a lot of American um, viewers watch me, so I just try and do it in inches as well. This is three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. Those are rough measurements because it doesn't directly um, convert. Right, now we're going to mount these three panels onto our Whisper White cardstock. There we go. So we're just going to, we need to space them so that they're equidistant apart. So to help me with that, I'm going to measure this card blank. It measures... <coughs> 14.4 so I'm going to mark 7.2 here so that when I'm sticking this down I can see if I've centralized it yeah that's just going to give me and then I can rub that out afterwards so I need some glue would be sensible if I'd got some glue out beforehand wouldn't it just find my little jar so this jar, for those of you who ask, a lot of people, I always get someone on each video. It's just got a little bit of damp cotton wool in the bottom so I can put my Tombow in there and that will mean that the tip will stay moist. It won't dry out and it will always be ready for me to use while I'm crafting. So a little bit of Tombow. And if you can, if you store it that way up, of course, um, it, um, it's always at the, the tip where you want it to come out. So even if you've got a, a Tombow that's, that's a little bit empty, there will still be glue coming out so <coughs> excuse me so you want to make sure that you've got that centralized to your pencil mark up there and you also want to make sure that the little gap there and there are the same there you go it's always the case with these cards that you just need a little bit more care um, to make them look nice if this was off center um, or wasn't straight or whatever it would ruin the look of the card completely right and just rub out my pencil mark and then these two pieces are just going to be glued equidistant so I'm going to make sure that these gaps are all similar hopefully let's see if that works <coughs> so this is a really good way to use up little scraps of designer series paper because if you've got little bits you can cut panels and depending on what size your your scraps are you can make your panels that size so you might need four or whatever but it's quite a good way of using up some designer series paper some pattern paper and making use of it because it's so beautiful i hate it to just be stuck in a drawer and never used although it does take me a long time sometime to to cut into really beautiful papers i've got the simply elegant <coughs> papers that i haven't managed to persuade myself to cut into yet but i will have to at some point and there we go just for those of you who haven't watched before i just use a cocktail stick or a toothpick i think it's called in america just to smooth my glue out so that you've got a thin layer of glue all over rather than splodges of glue in one place and none in another and it means that all your edges will be nicely glued down and that there won't be any glue squidging out and that's that panel and that then just needs to mount onto our card blank how great is that love it I've got a slightly bigger border which I might put around that way because it's going to be more interest going on over here you see I've left a slightly bigger border there than there so I'm going to put it here where the interest is going on <coughs> there we go and I just realized this was the card that I did for the Inspire Ink blog hop in April and today is Saturday the 22nd yes of may and it's a whole month we've got another inspiring blog hop gone out today so it's taken me a whole month to do this tutorial so i'm really sorry it's taking me so long if you were waiting for it i posted it of course when i do a blog hop i post the card on my blog but I generally don't post the um video because the people the people organizing the blogs don't want people taken away from the blog hop they want people to stay and if i post a video i might take you away onto youtube there we go beautiful right now what else do we need to do right we need to do this circle now sadly don't know if you can see but that um circle is stitched and it was one of the stitch shapes and sadly the stitch shapes are now retired as i said I've, I've, it's um 
I, I did this card a while ago. So I'm just going to use a normal circle from our layering circles. I'm just going to pop my grid paper out of the way. Take my mini cutter, which I use countless times every day. A little bit of magenta madness to cut out my oops, circle. There we go. Try and do it up to an edge so you don't wait. Oh, it's moved. So you don't move, use too much of your cardstock. You still have a bit of usable cardstock left over. I think I've shown you before. I have little boxes of all my offcuts that I, so I just grabbed this from my offcuts box. Um, so that is going to go on here. But we're going to do our daisy now. So don't think I need my cutter anymore. Just beware of losing your dies. My daughter for my birthday last week bought me a metallic um, magnetic dish and in fact I haven't got it in here yet but it'd be great when I'm die cutting because you can just plonk them in there and they stay where they're put so I'm always putting dies down and then losing them so that'll be really great. Thank you Annie for that present that was a really nice present to get. Right okay so now we're going to do the daisy. I'm going to do Three. I'm going to do a three layer daisy. You can get away with two. If you wanted one, you can, you can get away with it. It looks perfectly fine. If you just want one daisy, if you like that look, that's fine. I wanted a bit of a fuller daisy, although it does make it slightly harder to line them all up. So I'm just going to take my bone folder and just gently, very gently, so I've done this a bit too rough in the past and pulled a petal off, so do take my don't don't do what I do. Say what I do. What I don't do what I do. Do what I say. Do it very very gently. You don't need a lot of pressure. But this will just curve the petals up. And I know if you're going to post this, it's going to get squished. But it just does make it look nice. Gives a little bit of dimension. I've got. I use this uh, medium daisy punch endlessly. If I was advising beginners, which I do sometimes, this is one of the punches that I would say definitely buy that. Um, I just think it's got so many uses and it's so lovely, um, and it's um, makes it so easy, especially for beginners who haven't necessarily got a got a die cutting machine. Right, so I'm doing that slightly off cut, not very well, and it's offset. Sorry, not off cut. Um, and it's moving a little bit. There we go. That's better. Right. And then I want this one to go where the gaps are. So it just takes a little time to arrange this properly. But you can get it there. There we go. Oh, I'm pleased with that. Yeah. And I'm going to put it to one side to dry before I fiddle with that too much. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do the centre. Now, in this one, I just stamped from the Daisy Lane stamp set. So here's my Daisy Lane stamp set. So I just took the smaller Daisy, one of the few that I've mounted on, um, I've mounted the stickers on. I'm gonna stick it on this block, which isn't quite big enough, but it doesn't matter because I only want the middle. And I'm gonna take my Daffodil Delight marker pen. So I don't even need to bother about that ink pad. And I'm just gonna color the middle part of the stamp. Doesn't matter if I go into the petals because we're going to cut them off. And this is how I've been doing the centres of my daisies recently. So you get that sort of, looks a bit like coronavirus at that stage, I always think. So we need to cut those bits off. So just very carefully. And it doesn't need to be a perfect circle because daisy centres aren't perfect centres. Aren't perfect circles, rather. Um, if you look in nature, Daisies aren't completely symmetrical. They've got petals all over the place, so you can just make yours lifelike. So this is one way of doing your centre. But I'm going to show you another way because I'm a quiller. I have another way of doing a centre, and I just thought I'd show you. I sent a card to Jez with a daisy centre, with a, a daisy with a quilled centre, and she asked me how I made it. So I did promise that I would do a video. So I'm just going to put that up there for a moment. So in order to do my quilled centre, I'm going to take a piece of quilling paper. So this is a pack of quilling paper. You can buy them in all sorts of widths. This one is six millimetre wide and it's just loads and loads of strips of six millimetre wide quilling paper. Um, and I'm going to take one strip. It measures 450 millimetres, so 45 centimetres long. 
and I'm going to take one of these strips. Now, if you don't have quilling paper, because not everyone is like me, I appreciate that, um, you can use um, paper from anywhere. It does work better with paper rather than cardstock, this. Um, cardstock's a little bit too thick and unwieldy to do this. You can use cardstock to do quilling when you're doing bigger things, um, but I find this is a bit too... Um, so I'm just finding the scissors... Um, it's a, um, a bit too difficult to do it. So I'm going to take my 45 centimetres. I'm going to cut it in half. I don't need the whole length. And then what we're going to do is what we call fringing. So I'm going to fold it in half, which makes it easier and quicker to do it, and in half again. And then I'm just going to... I'm not cutting right up. I'm just cutting. I'm leaving about a millimetre or two millimetres. Let me show. Let me undo that and show you. So I've cut, but I've left a little join there because I don't want that to be cut. And then I'm going to do the same at this fold. And then I'm going to put them together and I'm going to fringe all the way along here. So I'm just going to cut up and just leave about probably one and a half millimetres, I would say I'm leaving. I know it gets a bit ridiculous when we're getting to those tiny measurements, but you just snip you need very very sharp pointy scissors to do this i've had these scissors for years and years and years they were originally from john lewis the, the janelle make john lewis i'm not even sure whether john lewis still do janelle um but they're they're the best scissors i've had for quilling um ever um but i do sharpen them quite frequently as well i've got a, a scissor sharpener that i use and there you have it so you then end up with a um fringed piece of paper oh and what i was saying about paper if you get birthday cards quite often they come in colored envelopes and i save all of those and then i cut my own um quilling papers from them so you don't have to have um you know you don't have to go out and buy, buy spend money really so now i've got a tool here this is called a slotted tool it's got a little slot i don't know how well you can see that a slot in there that i can slot the paper in which will then hold it, if I can get it in, it's like threading a needle, and then turn. And then you just turn the tool, holding the tension. With This hand is keeping it taut, but not too, you don't need too much tension. Just keep that straight. You can do it between your fingers if you really want to keep it straight like that. And just wind it until the end. So you didn't know you were going to have a quilling lesson, did you, when you came on this video today? Um, but this is quite a useful technique for making flower centres and it's worth, you know, even if you just bought a couple of sheets of yellow paper from somewhere um, so that you could cut your own and make your own centres. Right, OK, so I've done that one. I just want to show you, I'll just fringe this one as well, that you can do it without a tool. It's a bit more fiddly, but you can do it. So again, I'm going to fold it into four, cut at where the, the folds are. There we go. If you're not interested in quilling, then I hope you're whizzing ahead here. Um, if you're only interested in stamping and paper, other paper crafting. But as I'm a quiller, I just love this, this method for making a three-dimensional centre for my daisy, which is quite lifelike and um, makes the, the centre of the daisy quite lifelike. There we go. Um, there. So, so just snip all the way along you might need to go a bit slower I can't tell you how many numbers of times I've um, fringed a piece of paper so I'm quite skilled at it because I've done it so many times right okay now this is probably going to fail because I hardly ever do this but I just wanted to show you that what you can do is you can just do it with your fingers so you can just roll up from there get it started and then you should be able to roll it between your fingers. It's a little bit, I find it much more fiddly than using the tool. And I find it quite hard to get the tension tight enough. But it is. it can be done. And a lot of quillers actually quill without a tool. I'm not one of them. I've used a tool ever since I began quilling. And it's just too hard for me to relinquish it. But a lot of quillers do. So if you can see. So I'm just turning that. So you can do it. And then... Once it's got a bit bigger, you can then just roll there. So I just wanted to show you that. I think I probably won't carry on till the end because 
should I? Should I show you how it ends up? You can just adjust the tension. It's not as tight as my, my coil with my um, tool, but it is very possible to do it. And a lot of quillers would say this is the pure way to do it. Although I tend to disagree because it's called quilling because people used to use a quill to quill round. So they did have a tool, might not have had a slot in it, but they did have a tool that they used to quill round. And that is why it's called quilling because it was used quills before feathers. So there we go. So the choice is yours. You can try it without a tool. Tools are quite cheap and easy to come by though. And you don't need to worry too much about the tool when you're doing fringed flowers. It's when you're doing other things with quilling, you don't want a big hole in the centre and you do need to think carefully about your tool. Right, there's my two fringed flowers. So then once you've done that, you just carefully bring the flowers out, the petals out or the fringing out there and that is going to go in the middle of our daisy to make our daisy center so there you go if you've stuck with me a little quilling lesson today i do this all the time in my other life i use a lot of fringed flowers on my cards that i make to sell right okay so what we need before we can put all this together is a banner so i'm going to cut a strip of um Daffodil Delight at, actually, I don't know whether that colour that I've used there is, oh, that's not quite stuck yet, um, is more like So Saffron. I might change my mind here. I'm just going to have so Saffron. I think it might link up with my yellow a bit better. Just give me a moment to look through my scraps drawer here. Find a little scrap. Here we go. Yes, I think that is better. Now, do I think that will look as good with these bright colours, though? All these decisions that have to be made, what do you think? Do you think that will be okay? Yeah, I think that's okay. So it's that, or it's that. No, I think the, I think the, the so saffron is fine. I'm just going to cut this off a little way, because I don't need it that long. And then I'm going to cut it to three quarters of an inch. Of course, you can use your normal trimmer for this. Things like this, I find my um, little, tr little tr I hoped um, Stampin' Up! are going to bring these back. So many people ask me about them. Right, okay. So first of all, I'm going to um, make a fishtail banner with my Pick-A-Punch banners um, punch. This I use this a lot as well. This is another one of my frequently used um, punches like that. So easy to make a little fish tail, and then we're just going to stamp "Happy Birthday" with a greeting from the Blossoms in Bloom set. These have been used so much; they need a bit of a wash. Actually, they're not quite as tacky as they were. I need to put them in them. Need to make make a um, fill a bowl with some soapy water and just give them a wash. Right, I'm lining this up on my grid paper. And then lining my block up so that I know that it's straight. And then I'm going to grab my memento ink. Of course, you can make this card for any occasion. How, what a nice, bright, sunny get well card it would be, don't you think? Right, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get my head over here. So I want it to be in the centre of my banner. And I want it to be straight, sorry. There we go lovely and we're just going to see where that needs to go so that there so let's trim this off another little bit of glue just realized i haven't used any dimensionals on this card that's very unusual for me Usually my dimensionals are always out on my table. I do like a bit of dimension on my cards. Oh, I've just realised my daisy's a bit wonky. There we go. The centre wasn't quite centred. Right, okay, so that's going a little bit further over maybe. Good thing about Tombow, get a bit of wiggle room. There we go. And that's going there. So, oops, got my cocktail stick stuck to it. There we go. And 
then all that's left is just to stick that down. So, so you've got two colour schemes and two choices for the centre of the daisy in this card. And like I say, you could make it for any occasion. Thinking of you, thank you. Get well soon, which would be appropriate for all those occasions. Just going to clear some of the clutter out of the way here to show you both cards. I did do an insert for this one, just with a, a panel of Whisper White and a strip of the paper, but I don't think I've got enough of that paper left now. So what I could do, I guess, is do a panel with a strip down that way. So I might um, do that afterwards, do a, pan a panel in here and do a strip going down that way. But I hope you like my cards and I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Thank you for sticking with me. I do appreciate every single one of you that watches me. Um, it's one of the ways that I'm able to generate a little bit of income from my Stamping Up business and it allows me to carry on doing it. So for all the views I get, I'm really, really appreciative. And if anyone watching hasn't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it if you click the subscribe button below. Um, and then you can, you'll, I'll be on your list of um, people that you can see easily in your YouTube account. Anyway, that's it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll be back with you very, very soon. Bye for now.